We believe that God created Adam and Eve in his image, but they sinned when tempted by Satan. In union with Adam, human beings are sinners by nature and by choice, alienated from God and under his wrath. Only through God's saving work in Jesus Christ can we be rescued, reconciled, and renewed. Well, welcome. We're glad to have Eric Tolley with us today as we address Article 3 in our Statement of Faith, The Human Condition. Eric has been at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School for a number of years, uh, teaching uh, Old Testament, uh, and you've been here a couple of times, not only as a student, but as a faculty member. And uh, you teach uh, in the Old Testament and, and uh, emphasize uh, your area of uh, specialty, uh, pr pr prophetic literature, and, and the text of Scripture, uh, textual criticism, uh, and, uh, and just the the Christian understanding and reading of the Old Testament, uh, particularly the prophetic literature. So uh, it's encouraging uh, to have you here as, a, as a, a faculty member, as a minister, and we are thankful that you are here with us today, Eric. Yeah, thank you. Good to be here. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about Article 3, uh, the human condition. You know, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this particular article and many, many truths we could emphasize. But as, you, as you've read it, uh, as you ponder it, what are... Uh, two, three, or a few major truths that you think are important to emphasize or to highlight? Yeah, well, when you think about, um, you know, our, our, our self-conception, how we, how we perceive of our lives, how we think about uh, who we are as individuals, who we are, you know, corporately as humanity, um, I, I think one of the most fundamental things about this doctrine is just the fact that we uh, in being created by God, that, that means that we're creatures and we, we belong to God fundamentally. We are accountable to him um, for everything that we do. It, it talks about that at the end of uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, that ev everything is weighed, everything is noticed by him. Um, a lot of people, you know, look out into the stars and wonder if we're alone in the universe. And the Bible tells us that we're not alone, that, that there's a God who... Um, has created us and loves us, and uh, and and it also means that we're dependent upon Him, um, and uh, so that's that's pretty fundamental. I would also say that the comprehensive nature of of both, you know, kind of the what we might consider the positive aspect of Article Three and the negative aspect yeah. uh, is important to note um, on the positive side, or what we I guess perceive as the positive side. Uh, that we're made in the image of God, yeah. that he has created us good, mm -hmm. that uh, in the way that he created us, um, uh, we weren't supposed to die, we yeah. weren't supposed to suffer, we, we were supposed to be in perfect relationship with him. And that, that status as the pinnacle is, of his creation and those that he loves extends to every single person, yeah. um, regardless of their age, of their mental capacity, of, um, uh, of their ability, of their use to us. Every single yeah. person yeah. Is, is made in God's image and bears his image and is significant and important. You know, that is a unique truth of the Christian faith, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just that whole, that, 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 that everybody has dignity because they're created in the image of God, regardless of, of all of those things that you mentioned. Uh, it is a unique truth of the Christian faith. That's right. And, and possibly an, another, you know, unique truth is the flip side of that, which is, which is the corruption of sin. Yeah. That in Adam, uh, we sinned, we, we, we are born in sin, we choose to sin, and that extends, again, to every single individual. Yeah. Yeah. No matter the age, if they're yeah. your, your grumpy neighbor that lives next door, or it, the, the, a, a small infant, yeah. uh, everyone has a sin nature. Uh, Everyone, when they're able, chooses to sin. And, uh, and then um, the, the comprehensive aspect of, of our corruption extends not just to every individual, but even within us, to every facet of who we are. Everything, is, um, everything has been damaged yeah. by sin. Nothing's our, unaffected. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Our thoughts, our actions, our, our hopes, our dreams, the ways that we relate to God. Um, Everything is in some way tainted and broken by that. Um, and that, you know, probably as we'll talk about, that has some really fundamental implications for the ways that we think about ministry and 
in our lives as yeah. believers. Yeah, it really does. When you think about that, so you think about, two, you know, I, I think of two things, uh, uh, dignity mm -hmm. and then depravity. Uh, and so it's the dignity in which in which we we recognize that that, that God's the pinnacle of God's creation. Uh, that yes, we there is a distinction between uh, uh, God as a creator and we as the created. But as the created, we we are the pinnacle, uh, the, the unique beings in, in in God's image. But then there's that that other side, that the, the depravity of uh, uh, that that is that is. Uh, uh, Total. Uh, it, it, every aspect of us is, is impacted, and, and the and the and the tension between those two is so critical to maintain, because the very best person that we know cannot cannot boast before God because they're corrupted, but the very worst person we know has dignity and worth in God's sight. So th th they have to be maintained in our doctrine. Yeah, th that's very true. Um, so, so talk to me just for a minute uh, about uh, what is the significance of, of you know, you, you talked about sinners by nature and by choice, which is stated in, in that, the article. But there's also then in the article that, that, that we are under God's wrath. Mm -hmm. So, um, so how, does, how does that fit in? What is the implication of, of in union with Adam? And of course, that, that's going to be a parallel now. We're going to talk later in the statement of faith in union with Christ. And it's a profound Profound uh, uh, parallel, contrastive parallel, really. Yeah. So, what's the what's the significance of of, of the, the 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 statement of being in union with Adam? Yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting way that we think about this because because this is all we've ever known in our lives. It feels like sin and suffering and death are essential to yeah, life. Yeah, that 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 true. is the default. Yeah. When in fact the Bible tells us that the, the default is to be in relationship uh, with with God and um, uh, and not to die, and yet because of, of Adam's sin, because of our participation in our own sin, um, then we're we're under judgment, and because uh, our depravity and our corruption and our sin nature is comprehensive, that means that. God's wrath is comprehensive, that every single person is under his wrath. Yeah. And that's a new kind of default. Yeah. It's a new yes, default that every person um, uh, finds themselves uh, in, 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 in hostility toward God, in, in uh, sort of a default rejection of God, and God, uh, by default, it has, has wrath on every single individual. And, um, and so we are... We are members of this human race that comes from Adam that is, that is all under, under God's wrath. And um, that, that is the, the foundation of, of, uh, um, of the gospel, right? Yeah, of it, understanding it, the gospel. It, it really is. Uh, and you've said a couple of times, and I think it's important that we acknowledge that, and that is we do not come up with this notion on our own. God's revealed this to us. And, and so we're, we're, we, we build an Article 3 from Article 2 on, on the Scriptures. You know, God has revealed, you know, God's gospel is authoritatively revealed in the Scriptures. And, and you've mentioned that a couple of times. This is, this is what God has revealed about, about humanity, the dignity, and then, and then the depravity as well. Um, talk, talk for a moment just a, a, a about... So we, we, we learn the dignity, depravity, that we're under God's wrath. But, but then it, it goes on, and, and as you mentioned just briefly about the gospel, um, but, but, and, and, and it, it's only through the God's saving work in Christ. So talk about, about the, 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 the second Adam, the union, the second Adam. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but talk about that a little bit. What's the significance of that, and, and why, the, why the only? Uh, well, because if you, if you have a fundamentally corrupt nature, then uh, for the Christian who, uh, who understands biblical doctrine, we, we, we understand that our problem is not essentially uh, that we're not becoming our best selves or that we're not um, achieving our highest potential or realizing our ideals or that we're having you know, little conflicts with each other and things like that. It's a much more fundamental Issue that we are in Adam, and that we are, we are participants in this great human rebellion against God, and so if that's if that's the case, then what is required 
is not rehabilitation or education necessarily or um, you know, some sort of inspiration that helps us uh, uh, real, realize a better version of ourselves, but, but a supernatural transformation of the heart you know, that, that, uh, that we get so clearly in the Old Testament prophets, this recognition that, um, that, that what is needed is a fundamental transformation of the heart. Uh, a new nature, a fundamentally new nature, a new orientation toward God, and the forgiveness that comes from, uh, from this coming Davidic king who will make atonement for sin. And then, of course, when we get to the New Testament, uh, that is fully revealed to us as, um, uh, as the death and resurrection and the, and the sacrifice and the grace of Jesus Christ. And so, at that point, if we... If we join him, if we accept him, then we transfer our, our allegiance and our status from being in Adam to being in Christ. And, uh, and we are fundamentally, supernaturally transformed by Christ. And then um, uh, we belong to a new, a new status and a new people. Yeah. And that's the, the new covenant that was promised, the heart of stone to be removed and replaced with the heart of flesh is the new covenant that Jesus came to establish. Uh, and it's a, it's a beautiful picture of, of what new life in Christ uh, means. There's, 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 there's a new act of creation, as Paul would say. Um, now, let's transition just a little bit, if we may. Um, so we've talked about some key uh, truths uh, that are embedded in this uh, particular article. What are some ways that, that uh, this, the truths that we've just articulated or affirmed are being either questioned or undermined, uh, doubted, or denied. Uh, what are some ways that the culture, firstly, is pushing against some of these truths? And, and how is that, how may that be impacting the church, uh, Christians, some of the struggles that we may have uh, in light of the, some of the affirmations that we've just made? Yeah, well, you've, you, you've already um, highlighted the fact that these things are revealed to us yeah. and, and they're, they're so closely connected to our, to our doctrine of God, our understanding yeah. of who God is and our relationship to Him. I think that although in U.S. culture a lot of people go to church, that the, the culture and the worldview is still sort of, I think, functionally atheist, mm -hmm. right? We, we what behave, do you mean by that? Well, we behave as though God, God does not exist okay. and we arrange our... Okay. Our, our thinking and our, uh, and our worldview as though he isn't there, okay. right? It's and, not that we don't uh, say it. I mean, we'll right. say that we believe, but then our lives are lived in a different way. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. And so the, I, I would say that it's the, doc, the doctrine of, for example, of, um, of, of being image bearers, of the, of the value and the significance that we hold because we are specially created by God is explicitly denied by, by uh, a worldview like um, naturalistic evolution, yeah. which says we're just fundamentally yeah. animals. We, we come from within the natural world and that's, that's basically the extent of who we are. It's also implicitly denied um, in the ways that we mistreat each other. Mm -hmm. um, slavery. Yeah the mistreatment of the developmentally disabled, um, abortion, yeah. human trafficking, all these ways in which we either determine um, that someone can be exploited for our benefit or someone can be excluded or eliminated because they are a hindrance to our own sort of self-actualization. All of these are denials of that doctrine of, um, of being image bearers. Um, and I think there's, there's, probably, there's probably more insidious uh, things that we could talk about as well in terms of, um, of uh, a worldview that says that, that I have to find my own truth within me, my own self-determination. I mean, I have two daughters and we, we watch our fair share of, uh, or we have our fair share of kind of animated Disney films. And that is the pervasive uh, message of those films that um, uh, that I need to find my own voice and become my true self, and it it really is is quite apart from being properly related to my Creator yeah. in those cases. 
So we are being catechized. Yeah. We are being instructed. And, and we in the, in, in the church think of, 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 of families in the home or as you mentioned, your two daughters or, or the church. Uh, we are being impacted and influenced by those kinds of things. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So in, in that sense, um, you know, what, what, what are some things that you would uh, encourage us to think about to, uh, in a sense, build the, the Christian worldview uh, and over against the, the, the secular worldview or a worldview that is, that is against God? Uh, what, what are some things that you would suggest or recommend? Well, for one thing, I think we have to ensure that whatever we consume um, is um, being evaluated by us at all times. And in the case of parenting, that we're evaluating these things with our children, for our children, and not necessarily whether they watch it or not, uh, although that, that's certainly a, a consideration. It's a question for sure, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But... but um, but even those things that we determine are acceptable to watch, there is still, um, as you say, a, a constant yeah. education that's happening there. And, and we, have to, we have to run those things through the lens of Scripture and find out if, uh, um, to, to what extent those are working against our, our, our true doctrine. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's very helpful. Um, uh, transitioning once again, um, why, why is it important uh, uh, for the life and ministry of the, of the church to affirm uh, these, this truth uh, in the human condition, uh, your, your sense of why? Why is it critical? What are the critical things, reasons why uh, it builds into the life and ministry of the church? And, and whether, whether we're thinking of, of leaders, whether we're thinking of, of members, whether we, we've talked about families, um, why, why, why is this so important for us to grasp? Yeah, well, I mean, turning to the kind of the depravity side of this article, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is our, our broader philosophy of ministry as churches, as, as either as church leaders or as, as members of a church. If our fundamental problem is that we are under-resourced, um, or that we are uh, oppressed in some way, then church ministry is going to look like um, political action. Mm -hmm. If our fundamental problem is that we are discouraged and, and sort of beaten down by the trials of life, then our ministry is going to look like uh, uh, some sort of encouragement or some sort of, uh, of inspiration. But if our fundamental problem is that we are fundamentally corrupt and, and uh, uh, essentially uh, separated from God, hostile to God, and incapable of living lives that are pleasing to him, then our, th then our philosophy of ministry is, is going to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to give new life. And it's going to depend on scripture to speak truth uh, in, into these kinds of worldviews that um, would never arrive at those conclusions. And it's going to highlight the power of the gospel, which is the only thing um, that can fix those things. So I think that's very fundamental. Um, I, here, here at Trinity, when I was a student, we had an adjunct uh, professor, a local pastor, who um, would take his preaching classes out to a cemetery and he would point them to a gravestone and say, okay, now I want you to preach at that gravestone. And his point was, uh, the people that you are preaching to in the pews are just as dead as the person that lies under that gravestone. The, the, it, says, it says in Ephesians chapter 2 that not that, we were, not that we were sickly, not that we were uh, falling a little bit short, but that we were dead in our trespasses and sins. And I think that when it comes to our philosophy of ministry, um, and the decisions about priorities in our churches, that is absolutely fundamental to know what the problem really is and to make sure that it's a, it's a biblical understanding. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, at the, at the, at the end of, of uh, the article that we've been talking about, um, you know, we talk about dignity and, and, and depravity and our, our, only, our only hope, uh, God sending his son, Jesus Christ. 
and and through him and and, and our our belief faith in him uh, our faith uh, trust in him that we can be rescued reconciled and renewed and 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 it's 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 wonderful it's it's the it's the great reversal so from death comes life and and we're rescued from god's wrath we are we are uh, reconciled because we're alienated with God and we are renewed. That is the image is renewed. That is through the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it seems that's a beautiful picture of the great, of the, of the great disjunctive, but, but yeah. God who is rich in mercy, it that's seems right. to me. So it's not just, I mean, we have to talk about the sin uh, that, which is foundational to the good news that we have Th- that's Christ. right. And then that has all kinds of implications for our life together. Yeah. Because if you have a body of people who have all been supernaturally transformed and are in Christ, then that's going to have a dramatic effect on the way that, that we treat each other and relate to each other within the body of the local church. I, I, as I was um, reading this article, I was thinking about uh, James chapter 2, where it talks about not showing partiality. Right. Yeah. And, and we're so primed to do that. We're so primed to look at uh, the way that people dress, the money that they have, the, the social capital, the power that they hold, and to treat each other with favoritism or to exclude people or to try and figure out what we can get from people. We, we come into a room and we immediately begin to size everyone up to see where do I, where do I fit in the hierarchy around here. And, and James just uh, is, is very um, critical of that. Uh, and, 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 and why is that? Why? Why is it that we shouldn't show a partiality and favoritism? It isn't just because we're supposed to be generous people. Right. It, it, it comes back to this doctrine that, that we are all made in God's image. We, we, uh, we are all rescued by him and have um, at, at, at the core of a level playing field. So there are so many ways that this doctrine yeah. works itself out in really practical ways in the ways that we relate to each other. It really does. Uh, well, thank you, Eric. I'm, I'm, uh, last question, and that is, uh, I'll give you the last word. Um, uh, are, are there any uh, last summarizing comments, statements you'd like to make uh, as, as we conclude our time together? L- any last comments for our, for our listeners to, to re- leave them with? Well, as I, as I've, uh, as I think about this article, I, I've thought about um, Jesus' statement that um, it isn't the healthy who need a physician, but the sick. And I've also thought about um, his parable about the Pharisee who uh, looks around and says, um, oh God, thank you that I'm not sinful like that other man. Uh, Whereas the sinner beats himself on the chest and says, uh, have mercy on me, a sinner. And um, this can be be an article of doctrine that ruffles feathers, where we, we don't like to think about that. We don't like to think about depravity or the fact that we are, we are fundamentally broken. It's, it's uh, nicer to kind of think yeah. happy thoughts about ourselves. And yet we need an accurate diagnosis. We need to know um, what our true situation is before God. And there's, there's freedom in that because God has a great uh, pursuing love for us and uh, he loves us and, um, and it's no problem. It's no problem in the end because on the cross he paid for all of that, and um, uh, and that corruption, that sin, that that uh, participation with Adam, can be can be completely canceled, and that's the good news of the gospel. Amen. It is the good news. That's that, it's a good news of the gospel, and that's a good way to end. So thank you, Eric, for being with us today and and, and discussing Article Three, the human condition. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>